I'm, I'm really glad that you guys were able to join us. Uh, my name is Michael Quached and, and you know, since we're in the midst of, of kind of a strange quarantine summer and, you know, we're home with our kids and, you know, our, our teenagers are back from school and, 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 you know, we're spending a lot of time with our family, we're going to be talking about some of the physical components of how our body, our brain, and our biome relate. So I'm pretty eager to be able to share some of that information with you guys from, from multiple different perspectives. And, and when we talk about perspectives, we're gonna be talking about the perspective of um, you know, a mental health perspective, a mental wellness perspective, a biochemical perspective, and, and you know, a mental wellness perspective, the overarching kind of goal here. So if you've joined us in the past before, you, you've seen that we've been covering uh, multiple different topics uh, on our Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, virtual science nights. And, and our chief science officer and myself have been working really hard to be able to give us multiple different uh, uh, topics to talk about so that we can see what mental wellness looks like from multiple different angles. So, with that being said, you know, what we'll do is we'll spend a few minutes just talking about, um, you know, who we are, uh, you know, who, what we do, uh, who we are as a company, our scientific landscape, and, and how we approach mental wellness in, in today's age. So th this is who we are. Um, you know, you'll typically find that you know Dr. Sean or myself will will be your host for the night on Tuesdays or Thursdays. Um, but if you're lucky, you know there's a good chance that you'll get both of us. So tonight you're going to get a blend of myself and and also a couple key points and and recordings from Dr. Sean, just because since we're talking about you know, the, the physical body, uh, you know, our, 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 our brain, and, and in fact, our microbiome. I, I think it's really important to touch on uh, something that Dr. Sean and I discussed uh, uh, some time ago. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring that data for you guys to, to look at. So if you guys don't know, this is Dr. Sean, and he's our chief science officer here at Amari Global. Um, his background is specifically in the area of nutritional biochemistry. And he's had incredible involvements in, in his past where, you know, he spoke on, you know, the Dr. Oz show. He's been a guest speaker at the White House. He's been an educator for, you know, the International Olympic Committee, Committee of Sports Nutrition. Um, but Sean has also formulated products in this space for, for over 20 years now. And he also does the research of what substantiates all the ingredients that we use in our natural products here. Um, so he's truly an expert in the area of nutritional psychology or, or psychonutrition. And that's basically how nutrients influence various parts of our bodies and brains from, from a biochemical perspective. Um, and, and like I mentioned earlier, you know, we're going to be walking through what, what this looks like through multiple different perspectives. And my background is in a completely different area of study, and it's in be behavioral science from a mental health and, and clinical perspective. So I've been a mental health specialist, you know, in our county where our office resides uh, for, for roughly seven years now. And, and I specifically specialize in something called crisis stabilization. So within my career, I've been able to, to, to work with multiple different graduate programs in Southern California. I've been able to create curriculum around mental health, um, but, but the forefront of my interest and passion is really, really to be able to understand how humans behave. Um, and at Amari, what I, what I get to do here is, is I, I get to examine the way nutrition influences mental health and behavior uh, from an overarching perspective, because that's really what uh, uh, dictates our, our mental wellness and our well-being and all that great stuff. So, you know, since since we're talking about you know uh, the physical body, the biome, and the brain today, well, what I really want to walk us through is something that uh, you know people ask us a lot about, um, and and sometimes people will ask, well, what is the Project B3 pack? 
Um, and, and the Project B3 pack is something that is, uh, it's a comprehensive set of nutrients that actually attend to our, our brain, our body, and our biome and multiple different mechanisms or pathways. So Sean and I actually uh, did a recording about uh, a year ago on this very topic that gives people an overview in, in a quick snapshot of what Project B3 does and some of the philosophy and, and clinical studies and, and uh, methodologies behind the entire uh, component of Project B3. Uh, a really neat thing is, is that Project B3 actually uh, uh, combines all components of what Amari does, our, our programs, our platforms, and our people, all into one component so that people can actually get the nutrients that they need all in one package without having to, to, to look at you know, 15 different solutions. But before we jump into what that, that set looks like, you know, I wanna just share with, with you guys the, the, the thing about why we're doing what we're doing. I know there's a lot of people who have not been on our virtual science calls before, so I wanna make sure that I set the landscape and tone so that people really understand why Amari exists and why mental wellness is truly, truly a uh, uh, thing that we're trying to resolve here. So the World Health Organization calls stress, you know, the, the health epidemic of the 21st century. And, and you can see by all these, you know, just front page publications and, you know, some of the most recent pieces that, that we've heard in the media is, you know, the, 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 the mental health kind of cascade that's a byproduct of the coronavirus. Um, you know, so some, some of the mental health issues that we've seen today are, are you know, Kanye West, you know, kind of, uh, you know, outbreak in these last couple of weeks. But, but the more important kind of overarching goal here is that mental wellness and mental health is becoming the national conversation. Um, and it already is the national conversation and it's slated to grow in the next, you know, years now because we're actually putting a focus in this area in which we, uh, you know, almost neglected these, these last decades. So with stress being the number one, you know, health epidemic of our century, you know, one of the biggest things that, that we need to know is that stress is actually the number one contributor that affects mental health and mental wellness in a negative way when it's prolonged. So, you know, if we have the solutions and, and the, the tools in our shed to help uh, uh, increase our stress resilience and manage stress better, you know, those are the things that we should be talking about and looking at. And, and Project B3 really is one of these comprehensive perspectives that, uh, you know, integrate supplementation, diet, nutrients, uh, lifestyle activities, and, and all those things to help bring people to a, a, a better position in their life. Um, and and this, is, this next piece is, is really what summarizes the entire Project B3 experience um, from our chief science officer and myself. Um, but this is, this is one of the best snapshots that, that we have in that, that sheds light. I'm gonna try to record the, like, like so, crap. Um, I gained a lot of weight. And so you go into the new year, like, you know, really heavy in terms of your mental wellness, in terms of your body wellness, and you, you know, try to get back on track. And so what we wanna try to do with this program is to help everybody be lighter going into 2019, lighter in terms of your mentality, lighter in terms of your body weight, lighter in terms of what you think about the future. That might sound very grandiose, but I wanna try to frame this out for you tonight. What we're gonna do, you can see on the slide right now. <clears throat> um, can, uh, can you guys hear me? There's a couple people in the chat room that says I'm not hearing anything. Can you guys on Zoom? What we're going to do tonight is give an overview. 
for what's going to happen over the next eight weeks. Um, I want to give you a sense for, you know, what does the diet look like? And it's not really a diet, so to speak, but that's an easy way to say, what are we going to be eating? I want to give you a, a perspective for what the supplementation looks like and what the exercise looks like and, and, and really give you, um, you know, 30,000 foot view about what we're going to dive into on each of the nights. Because what, what, what happens sometimes, I've done this program for many, many years uh, during the holidays. And what happens sometimes is you get out to week six and somebody learns something at week six and they say, oh my gosh, I wish I had known about that way back at week one or two. And I, I could have been doing it this whole, the whole time. There's no way for us to give you all the detailed information all at once in one webinar like this. So I'm gonna to try to give you a highlight. Uh, we're actually gonna start the supplementation next week and I'll explain to you why. Um, but, uh, but we'll go through One other note, this is a pilot program. Like I said just a few minutes ago, we thought we'd get 30 or 40 people. And that we would bring people through and, you know, find out what, what works and what doesn't work and what people liked and, you know, what do we need to get rid of and what do we need to focus on and that kind of stuff. We still are going to do that, but now we've got over a thousand people expressed interest and jumped into the private Facebook page that we have. So if you're watching on Zoom, we also have a private Facebook page called Project V3. Uh, and you can ask to be invited to that. You can, you can talk to a, a number of Amari Wellness Partners to get in. And, and, and just to set the landscape, you, you can see that we, we created this uh, a video as a trial um, when we first designed our, our, our Project B3 program. Um, and, and we were intending to, to have this created as a trial group with maybe, again, like Dr. Sean and, and, and I mentioned, you know, 40 people, maybe 50 people. But if you look at our Project B3 pro or program or Facebook group today, we have over 4,000 people in that group. Um, so, you know, it's an active group in which people are actually using this Project B3 uh, uh, program subset and, and seeing some great results. So we, we actually did a, 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 a study on this data as well. Um, which is going to be referenced at the uh, the, the end of our, our slide set here. So uh, hang in there. Invited to that as well. So um, all the info, this video is going to be on Facebook Live. This video is going to be archived on Zoom. It's going to be archived on my website. We're going to put it up on YouTube. We're going to really surround people with different ways to consume this information. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get rolling here. Uh, where'd my cursor go? There we go. Um, so, you know, when we talk about these kinds of things, there's a, these kinds of things meaning weight, uh, there's a very often a lot of hype and a lot of uh, false promises with some of these programs and a lot of, a lot of fad, fadness, if, if that's a word, about these kinds of things. Uh, you can see the, the very popular Bigfoot diet here. And, you know, many of these things will, will be very exciting because they're new. Avoid a particular food. In fact, there's one diet plan that's out there right now, which I won't name by, by name, but it, it, it really tells you that if you, if you stop eating beans and you stop eating tomatoes and you stop eating peppers, uh, you're going to lose weight. Well, I'm here to tell you nobody ever gains too much weight by eating peppers, beans, and tomatoes, right? I mean, that kind of stuff is just ludicrous on its face. So what I want to do is, is step you guys through a program that I've been using for the last gosh, more than 15 years, the very first book that I wrote called The Cortisol Connection, which was all about how stress can, can make people fat. Stress can do a lot of things. It can, it can make you sad. It can, it, can, uh, it can lead to depression. It can lead to neurotransmitter imbalances. It can lead to immune system suppression. It can lead to more inflammation. It can also lead to cravings and belly fat um, um, accumulation and things like that. So um, I put this program called the Sense Lifestyle Program into that that original book that was that came out in 2002 and I've done a version of this program every single year since then through the holiday period what that sense stands for is stress management and also sleep management exercise nutrition supplementation and evaluation and the whole premise of the program is that you'll feel good and as a result of that you will also lose weight uh, and so over the course of this 
next eight weeks, we'll dive into each one of these. We'll do a deep dive on stress management. We'll do a deep dive on sleep management, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll show you what the, I'll show you what the schedule of that looks like. But the whole idea is that if you can get someone to feel good, you can get them to look good because these things are connected. And I'll explain why in just a second. So this, the sense program in my very first book, The Cortisol Connection, outlined these sorts of things. And they're all important. They all can bring their own contributors to the to the um <clears throat> to the party, so to speak. So you can get benefits with just focusing on nutrition. You can get benefits by just focusing on exercise. But why in the world would you do a limited approach when we know that all of these things can benefit? It's exactly the same thing that we're doing at Amare for mental wellness. If we knew that neurotransmitters were one piece of the puzzle, and we've known that for decades now, why would you just focus on that if you also knew that there was the, the, the microbiome and there was gut integrity and there was immune system function and there was inflammation balance and all those sorts of things can, can modulate mental wellness. So that's one of the reasons we've been so successful over the last year in helping people feel better in terms of their depression and their anxiety and their stress and their burnout and all that kind of stuff because we've come at that multifactorial problem of mental wellness with a multifactorial solution. And we want to do the same thing for these body problems for lack of a better term. So what we want what we've done in the last year or so is completely change the mental wellness paradigm from this idea of the problems only being in your head and really reframed that for thousands and thousands of people to say it's not just a brain issue, it's a gut brain issue and bigger than that it's a gut brain axis issue and there's lots of things we can do along that gut brain axis to help you feel better. We want to do exactly the same thing for these body problems. So when I say body problems, I mean gaining weight, I mean gaining belly fat, I mean uh, metabolism issues, I mean blood sugar control, I mean metabolism like thyroid hormone, cortisol levels, cravings, overall appetite. Those are all body issues that up until tonight, we've basically thought of those, we collectively, the public, have thought of those issues as purely body issues. And so we've, we've tried to address them with, okay, change your diet, uh, avoid these foods, um, uh, focus on a very restrictive plan, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, other things like, you know, even you control your blood sugar and things like that, which are, which are all nice and wonderful, but they're only focusing on one piece of the problem. What if I told you that the brain issues and the body issues were actually the same issues. Biologically, biochemically, physiologically, there's a lot of similarities. And that's one of the reasons that a lot of people who have used our products, especially the fundamentals pack, to help themselves feel better, have accidentally lost weight. You know, and we hear this all the time from people. They'll say, hey, wait a minute, I'm not craving those things that I used to crave. I'm not going to reach for my favorite snack before I sit down in front of Netflix at, you know, at, at night. It's a subconscious change in their appetite levels. And the reason for that is because the linkage between the brain issues and the body issues are through the biome. And the, the signals that are coming out of the microbiome are telling you, are you hungry for more salad or are you hungry for more Doritos? I mean, it, it, that's an oversimplification, obviously, but to make the point that if we can get the biome right, we can get a balancing effect in each of those two other areas. And as you can see on the graphic that's on the screen right now, they rebalance each other. If we can get the brain balanced, we can get the body balanced. If we get the body balanced, we can get the brain balanced. And you get the idea that you see the arrows going in a bi-directional fashion, that you can get yourself into this virtuous cycle where feeling better makes you look better, which makes you feel better, which makes you look better, et cetera, et cetera. But it has to start with the mental wellness piece. That's why when we talk about the benefits that people should expect with this pilot program over the next eight weeks, look at this list of things. I, 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 I don't think there's anybody probably on the call who, who 
doesn't want some of these things, right? But look at how they go in hierarchy. Improve gut health, balance your microbiome, optimize your gut brain access function, reduce stress. So here's, you know, sort of gut focused things. Now we're, then we can move into more sort of mental wellness focused things, stress and vigor. And vigor is this very holistic way of feeling better. It's one part physical energy, one part mental acuity, and one part overall well-being. That's how we measure that. And in psychology research, it's the opposite of burnout. You can increase energy levels, improve sleep quality, improve mental clarity. And then we move from the mental wellness benefits into the physical wellness benefits, the physical health changes, improve skin tone, reduce cravings, improve body composition. And when we talk about body composition, it's really important to understand that we're not talking about weight loss per se. We are talking about fat loss, but we very often will see fat loss and lean maintenance. So you lose the fat and keep the muscle, which is really important to understand. And I'll show you some data that supports that in just a second. But, you know, the, the, the weight loss piece of it is coming way down at the bottom. That doesn't mean it's the least important, it, but it means that we're going to bring you through this hierarchy of you're getting these benefits earlier, middle, middle, later. So you might not see weight loss for four weeks or six weeks or eight weeks as your body is adjusting, but it'll come. And I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll show you why I can say that with confidence in just a second. So here's what the, here's what the schedule of, of seminars is going to look like. Uh, over the next bunch of weeks. Tonight's our overview. Um, and each one of these will probably be about 60 minutes, right? That's what I'm setting these webinars for. Um, I'll try to keep it to 60 minutes. And then throughout the week, I'll do little pop-ins on Facebook Live. And I'll say, hey, just to drill down into that a little bit. And, you know, you can sort of consume those as you, as you see them. Um, but we're going to go through rebooting and, and the biome changes next week as the, as the start of our supplementation. Then we'll talk about body and brain. Then we're we're gonna take a week off for Thanksgiving. Uh, you can see how the rest of it goes. Um, and then we'll get all the way down to the end of the year so that you can go into 2019 really on a, on a, on a strong, strong footing. Um, and maybe you're gonna continue doing some of the things that you learned in this program. Um, people have asked me uh, many times, um, are we gonna build into this structure? Are we gonna build in you know, a cheat day so that we can still have our holiday cookies and so we can have a, a glass of wine when we go to the holiday? day parties and things like that. And I want people to understand that those aren't cheats. Those are real life. And those are parts of things that are perfectly allowed within the context of how we're going to be approaching the eating piece of this. One of the things I think is really important, and I'll, I'll, I'll just mention it now, and I'll really go into detail on it on the nutrition night on week six. But our relationship with food sometimes is is fraught with all kinds of baggage. Um, people very often will have this antagonistic relationship with their food. Um, and I, as a, as a nutritionist, right, my PhD is in nutritional biochemistry, I really want people to like have a love affair, for lack of a better term, with your diet. I mean, there's nothing that we, we, we do. There's no more intimate interaction that humans have with the world around them than nutrition, right? Think about it. The things that we consume into our bodies nourish us and nourish our microbiome and make us healthy or not healthy, but that food becomes part of us, right? I mean, you are what you eat is, not, it is you know, not just a, you know, sort of a, 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 a something that we say all the time, um, but it's, it's, it's truth, right? Right? So, you know, we want to have that, that intimate relationship with that food. We want to love that food. We, want to, we don't want to be enemies with the food. And hopefully that's one of the things that you'll come away with, that, that there's no bad foods. There's certainly different kinds of foods in moderation. But we'll get into that at certain times. Here's the recommended core products that I want people to use. So, you know, we've been talking about this program being perfectly free, right? All the webinars are free. All the information that you're going to get is free. All the recipes that I'm going to post up and the smoothies and the, and the pictures of what a good meal looks like, all that's going to be free. And, and people will get benefits from that. Supplements, if you, if you look back to that sense hierarchy, supplements are one piece of the puzzle. And so if you want to get the, you know, the whole shebang, so to speak, use all the tools that you have access to, you're going to want to use the supplements. And the core recommendation here, you can see at the top, reboot 
fundamentals, GBX protein, GBX superfood, GBX seed fiber, and Vita GBX. That's what I really want people to be using on a consistent daily basis. You can see that I have, you know, I have the I have the superfoods, the GBX seed fiber and 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 superfood and the protein. I have it as in parentheses there, one to two, because each of those canisters is 15 servings. That's because not everybody will use a serving of this typically, you know, in their regular life, will not use a serving every single day. So they don't necessarily need a 30 serving to get them through every month. They might use it one day and then skip a day and one day and skip a day and things like that. But in the context of a program like this, you might want to be using it every day. You might want to be using a smoothie every day at breakfast or a smoothie every day at lunch. And that, that kind of cadence and level of usage really is going to be up to the individual. Um, I, t I use a smoothie almost every morning for breakfast um, or uh, I'll use a smoothie almost every time that I go to the gym. Uh, if I'm, you know, if I'm lifting weights or I'm doing something around, that's not like, you know, on my bicycle or out running on the trails or something like that. So I, I'm taking at least one smoothie a day. Sometimes I'm taking a, uh, uh, you know, a second one if it's around a workout like that. Uh, but that's, that's my personal preference. Some people like smoothies, some people don't. So that's going to be something you're going to have to decide to do. And you'll find, you'll find what works best for you. The optional, but highly recommended ones there, um, mood and sleep sleep and energy are going to be important when we start talking about some of the hormonal aspects of this whole cascade. Things like cortisol control, things like serotonin metabol uh, uh, serotonin and, and melatonin metabolism, things like, um, you know, tension and sleep quality and things like that. When we start talking about those, you might realize that it's really important for you to get good sleep quality if you're trying to lose belly fat, for example. It's really important for you to get cortisol control if you're trying to get a handle on sugar cravings, for example, right? So some of these things are going to be really interesting to certain people because that's their trigger and certain things will be less interesting to people because that's, that, you know, that's not something that, that's, that sort of bothers them. So I think people will have different things to take away from all of these different lessons that we're doing. And then the optional um, but encouraged are some of the more nutritional kinds of things. So omega, uh, probiotics, and digestive, they're there. They're going to help you with, you know, those different aspects. But for this particular program, they're not they're not highly recommended and they're not sort of, you know, required or, 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 or uh, firmly recommended. Okay. So if you have questions about, you know, um, adding those in, there's budget reasons here too. You know, people aren't going to be able to use all of the products all of the time, multiple times through the program. Uh, you really have to sort of, you know, draw the line somewhere. Okay. So how can I, how can I talk with this, talk about this program with such good confidence? Um, it's because we've run it for many, many times in the past. And sometimes when we run it, we actually, run it like a research study. Um, we're probably going to be doing it at an actual weight loss trial of exactly what you guys are going to go through here over the next eight weeks. We're going we're gonna to collect data you know, at the beginning of the year. We'll have a group of people that we recruit that are moderately overweight and moderately stressed. Uh, that's, that's exactly who we recruited for this trial that we've presented at a couple of different scientific conferences. And, and we'll, we'll collect data. We'll collect data on their microbiome, on their stress hormones, on their inflammatory markers, uh, on their appetite levels, on their mood state, um, so that we can, we can try to show how, how effective a program like this is. So this is one that we presented a, a, um, a few years ago. This is what it looked like. Um, we had 32 subjects who started the program, and they were mo moderately stressed, moderately overweight. Um, of the 32 who started, 29 finished the program. That, so that's a 9% attrition rate, 9% dropout. Um, that is significant because typically in an eight week weight loss program, what you'll see is anywhere from a 30 to 60% dropout rate, right? So when you do weight loss trials, you actually plan for that. You plan that we're going to get at least 50% dropout. And so you have to pile on additional people knowing that, you know, half of them are going to go away by the end of the, by the end of the trial. Uh, so 9% attrition rate tells us that, hey, uh, th this, this, um, 
it, this was easy. It was uh, it was approachable. It was uh, it was something that didn't feel uh, like a big deprivation. Uh, so you know, people people you sort of gravitated towards that. Uh, you can see that we went through this whole sense program. I do want to point out one thing: the supplement we used here a few years ago was a combination of these ingredients. One called citrus polymphosphatated flavones, or shorthand PMFs, and uracoma longifolia. The idea behind this was that it would reduce stress and maintain um, metabolic rate. Um, what we have in our Mood Plus product does exactly what these two were intended to do, but do it at a much more advanced way. Um, so, you know, what we saw with this supplement, I think is gonna be much, much um, uh, 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 more effective compared to what we're using with the, with the existing supplements. So what did we find? What we found was, first of all, on the mood state piece, and then once I get through this data, I'm actually gonna answer a couple of questions that I see coming in that I think will be, will be good to answer here. Um, but on the mood state piece of it, people felt a heck of a lot better from comparing baseline numbers where they started to where they finished at the end of the eight week program. So this measurement, global mood state, is sort of an overall well-being index. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of all the negative mood states, all the positive mood states averaged together as an overall well-being index. And on, on this one, it's kind of like a golf score. A lower number is a better number. So after the program, there was a 22% improvement in an overall mood. And a lot of that was driven by the fact that there was a 14% improvement in stress levels, right? So that's a, that's a good thing. People were less stressed. Um, they, they, they felt that the program was very approachable and easy to do. And that's important because typically what you see in these kinds of trials is that stress levels go up when people are on a, on a program, on a, on, a, on a restrictive dietary program. In fact, it's a psychological state that's called dietary restraint. And the higher your level of dietary restraint, the higher are things like cortisol, the higher are things like depression and fatigue and anxiety, and the lower is your ability to keep the weight off going forward into the future. So people with high dietary restraint can lose the weight, but they gain it back, and a lot of times they gain back even more. So it's a, it's, a, it's a particular stress response, if you will, to the fact that you're restricting yourself all the time. And so that was one of the really important things that we wanted to try to control is that we weren't increasing stress in people just to get them to lose weight. We wanted to lower stress and help them lose weight at the same time. So you can see some of these other things, some of these other mood state parameters, negative mood states go down significantly, positive mood state like a vigor goes up significantly. And a, a key reason for that Neurotransmitters are changing, but it's difficult to measure a lot of neurotransmitters in humans. You can't do sort of brain probes in humans very, very uh, conveniently. So we look at we look at hormones, metabolic hormones in the in the in the blood and sometimes in the saliva. And what we looked at in this particular trial, we looked at testosterone, which is the counter-regulatory hormone to cortisol, the the stress hormone. And typically, what we see when people are gaining weight, their cortisol levels are going up because they're stressed out, and their testosterone testosterone levels are dropping. And so the, 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 the disconnect between those two hormones, it's particularly toxic for two things. It's toxic for your mood. Depression levels go through the roof when you see cortisols go up and testosterones go down. And body weight or body composition changes in a very adverse way. As cortisol goes up, belly fat goes up. And as testosterone goes down, muscle mass goes down. And then that leads to a vicious cycle of continued weight weight gain because as you lose your muscle mass, you lose the big thing that is driving all your, all your calorie burning. And so it makes it really hard to lose weight and super easy to gain the weight back. So what we wanted to do is be able to show that we can lower the cortisol, raise the testosterone. And this happens in men and women, and this is really important. It's even more important for women because any little drop in your testosterone is going to be very problematic because women have so little testosterone to begin with, 10 times less less than the average man. So if we can get that ratio back up to where it needs to be, um, then it's, then, then it's, then it's going to be a good thing. So we saw a lower ratio, meaning cortisols were down, testosterones were up better uh, after the program than, than before. So that's all great. People felt better. Uh, their, their hormones were better. Their mood state was better. Uh, but what, 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 what happened to their body weight? 
Here's what happened on the body composition side. Over the course of that eight weeks, people lost two and a half kilograms, right? Which is a little over five pounds, which doesn't sound like a huge amount, right? Not even quite a pound uh, a week. Um, but when you look at where that was and, and lost 2% two, 2 body fat, but when you actually look at that 2.5 kilograms of weight loss, what we saw was this, that 2.4 kilograms of that was coming purely from fat mass losses. So, so virtually 100% or 98 point something percent of the weight loss was fat loss. And we were able to maintain, this is fat free mass, we're able to maintain muscle. That's exactly what you want from a program. If, you, if all your weight loss can be can be fat and none of your weight loss can be muscle that sets you up for continued weight loss in the future and it also sets you off to keep the weight off so you don't regain it um, and a key reason that that happens is because your rmr your resting metabolic rate is maintained typically what you'll see on these programs you know not this program but on weight loss programs in general is that people lose weight but a big proportion of that weight is muscle and because of that metabolic rate goes down. We don't burn as many calories. And so that means we have to keep eating less and less and less or else we gain weight. And that's how people develop this antagonistic relationship with food that I mentioned at the very start, because then they get into a state where they say, oh, even if I eat healthy foods, anything that passes my lips ends up on my hips, right? I gain weight just looking at food. You hear people say these sorts of things. And in a sense, it's true because they've probably chipped away at their muscle mass for so many years of continued diet cycles that they're in a state where their caloric expenditure, their resting metabolic rate is so low, they, they really have to, the solution for them is to build their muscle mass back. Um, we also saw very nice effects on, on blood lipids. So cholesterols go down, LDLs, which is your bad cholesterol, goes down. So this is healthy for people on a variety of different ways. It's, it's cardiovascular healthy, it's physiological, biochemical, hormonal healthy, it's psychological healthy healthy. It's really sort of hitting all the pieces that people want. So I want to answer, I want to answer one question that I saw come in through the chat room, which is what if you're underweight? Um, and if you're underweight, you would actually follow the exact same thing because what's going to happen in somebody who's underweight when your hormones rebalance and your cortisol testosterone ratio gets back into the proper place, you're going to start to gain more muscle. And that's exactly what you want. You want to be gaining that muscle mass, not the body fat. People are, I think people will be shocked as we go through this. One of the themes that you're going to see is that I used to, in my previous career, used to do a lot of elite level athlete counseling, you know, U.S. Olympic Committee, International Olympic Committee, U.S. Track and Field, uh, U.S. Ski Team, you know, all these top level athletes. And I would do virtually the same pattern of a program that we're going to talk about over these eight weeks for, to help people reduce stress and lose weight. I would do the same thing for athletes who needed to reduce stress and maintain weight or reduce stress and gain weight. And that's, th th those sound like they should be opposite things. There sounds like it should be different programs for losing weight and gaining weight, but actually biochemically and physiologically, it's the exact same patterns of what we want to do. And you'll get a perspective for that as we go through here. Um, so, uh, let me see if there's anything else that I need to go. Um, yes, I will address insulin and diabetes, and I'm going to do that in just a second. Well, I'll do it right now because I'll forget. I'll get off on another tangent. Um, a big piece of what we're doing is that metabolic piece. So um, that cortisol testosterone piece is something that I showed you data on. We also have data in other trials on blood sugar levels. Um, and so, you know, people who are uh, diabetic, people who are pre-diabetic will particularly benefit from the, from the kinds of things that we're, that we're going to be recommending across this program. Um, they may even benefit in certain, you know, additional ways than the average person because they do have those problems with insulin sensitivity. So, you know, on the night when we talk about nutrition, one of the things that we're going to learn about is what a proper blood sugar cycle looks like. And the fact that if your blood sugar levels are too high, that should 
shuts off your fat burning. If your blood sugar levels are too low, that's going to that's gonna send appetite signals all through your body and you're going to start craving sweets and carbohydrates and gummy bears and Kit Kats and all that kind of stuff. Um, I hate to rattle off all that candy, but it was just Halloween. So you got you to cut, cut me a little bit of a slack. Um, so we'll talk about that kind of stuff. Um, and it works for type 1 and type 2. And we'll talk about how people need to regulate their their um, their insulin usage and things like that as we as we get through. Okay, so one of the big questions that we always get from people is what in the world is causing weight gain and weight loss? And it's I, I already covered a lot of these things. Some of it legitimately is calories in, calories out. But I want to give you a I want to give you a um, a wrinkle on that. Right? When I say calories in, calories out, it isn't so much calories that go into your mouth. They go into your mouth and they go down your esophagus and they go through your stomach and they go through your small intestine and a lot of them get absorbed there. Some of them will not get absorbed and they'll go into your large intestine and your microbiome will do something to them and then they'll go out. So they haven't actually gotten in anywhere until they're absorbed. So gut integrity and microbiome balance has a huge um, modulating effect in terms of what goes in here and what actually gets in to the body, if that makes sense. I'll have some gra I'll have some graphics that show this in more detail as we go in, but this is one of the reasons, besides dietary restraint, that we don't want people counting their calories all the time or weighing their food or worrying about their carb grams or all that ridiculousness. Um, that isn't what we're trying to go for. Uh, your metabolic rate, we're going to talk about that. Your appetite regulation, we're going to talk about that on the biome night because a lot of those appetite signals are coming from your microbiome. If you can get the right bacteria there, you're going to get different signals and that's going to drive different cravings. It's going to drive different appetite. Um, it's going to drive appetite for things that are healthier for you and then things are th that are that are unhealthier for you so there's all these other things the genetic piece we talk a lot about genetics at amari in the in the in the idea that our genetic potential that we're born with our genes in our bodies are not our destiny they have to be those genes have to be turned on or turned off in particular patterns to lead to whatever that destiny is and guess what determines what genes get turned on and get turned off in large parts Part, that's the microbiome. So you can see where a lot of this is coming back to the microbiome and gut integrity and then cascading out from there. That's why this brain body biome paradigm really, I think, is going gonna, is gonna to change a lot of minds and help a lot of people. Um, so, so some of the things that we're going to go through. Um, so we're about halfway through the seminar now. Um, and that's perfect because I'm just about halfway through my slides. So we're, so we're on track. I haven't gone through too many, too many tangents yet. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, people have asked me, what kind of diet are you going to recommend? Are you going to recommend a paleo diet? Are you going to recommend a, a vegan, plantitarian kind of a diet? Uh, are you going to recommend something in between? You know, a lot of people hear me talk about um, Mediterranean style diets or anti-inflammatory style diets. Um, and, you know, it isn't to say that we that we all want to eat an Italian diet or a French diet or a Greek diet or a Turkish diet. Right. Those are all actually pretty different from each other, even though they're all around the, the, the kind of Mediterranean cusp. But they have a similar pattern to them. Um, the reason that I like to recommend that pattern of diet is because um, it has the best data for being uh, anti-heart disease, anti-cancer, anti-Alzheimer's, anti-diabetes, anti-obesity, anti-depression, if I didn't say that already. Um, the data there is, is insurmountable. It's far and away the most proven plan for health and longevity and happiness and all that kind of stuff. But it's also difficult for a lot of people, right? It's, it's, it's foods that sometimes we don't know how to prepare. It's foods that aren't always readily available. Sometimes they're expensive. So, so anyway, how can we eat that pattern without having to be that, like sort of structured in that all the time? Um, one of the reasons that I don't like any of the sort of branded fad diets that are out there is because they're all the same in terms of 
this. You know, this is sort of their marketing piece, if you will. No offense to marketers, um, but, but the real reason that people lose weight on Atkins, which is one end of the spectrum, very, very high fat, high protein, low, low carb, and then something like an Ornish, which is very, very high carb, very, very low fat, like 90% uh, carbohydrates, 10% fat. I mean, really, really, you know, the other end of the extreme, people lose weight on both of them. What, how in the world can that be? The reason is on a short-term basis, people lose weight because it's a, it, it's a, it's a caloric, caloric restriction. The plan that we'll recommend actually is also a caloric restriction. That's one of the reasons that it works. It's, it's, the, it's the first law of thermodynamics. Um, you know, a certain, certain amount of, you know, calories in, calories out with the caveat that I gave a little bit ago. Um, but a lot of these diets are not healthy long-term for the microbiome. And next, next week, we'll talk more about what that looks like, the right kinds of fibers, the right kinds of phytonutrients, things like that. There are also dietary patterns like this. This is what the government recommends that we eat. And this is a recipe for making lab animals fat. You know, in, in, in my previous life in graduate school, we would have to make rats as fat as possible so that we could study what made them lean. Right, so we needed to start with a fat rat, and this is basically the diet plan that we gave them because it made them really fat, really fast. Um, even this isn't exactly what we eat. This is what the government tells us to eat. This is what we actually eat. If you go into the USDA consumption data and see what uh, of the food groups we're consuming the most of, and you can see obviously this is a, a, a you know a, a topsy turvy sort of a sort of a pyramid. Now we're eating too many fats and oils and sweets, and that's because we're eating lots and lots of processed food and less of the whole foods and the, and the non-processed things that we're going to be recommending here. Here's what a, a, a diet pyramid would look like if it were based on uh, the Mediterranean style diet that we're going to be talking about a little bit here. You'll see that things like red meat and butter and all of these, you know, more processed uh, kind of, you know, white foods um, are, are used sparingly. They're almost used as, 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 as treats or, you know, condiments or, you know, sides of the plate kind of thing. They're not the, they're not the forefront of the meal. The forefront of the meal are whole grains and plant oils and lots and lots of fruits and vegetables and plenty of nuts and lean protein and alcohol in moderation and multivitamins for most people. So that's the kind of pattern we're going to do, but in a really, really easy way. So years ago, when I started putting this program together and this, and, and, and this, and this style of eating, the driving force was that we knew that people who followed these kinds of plans had high dietary restraint because you're always worrying, am I on plan, am I off plan? Can I have that, do I need to avoid that? And that increased dietary restraint and it led to very poor success going forward, especially when people dropped off the plan. So in order to lower dietary restraint as much as possible, this is what we came up with. Um, and I've, I've used, this has been published all around the world now. It's been in, in other books besides the ones that I've written. It's been in plenty of magazines. It's called the helping hand approach. And, you know, mother nature was ingenious that it gave us this portion control device right there at the end of our arms that we can, we have with us all the time when we're out to eat, when we're at the deli, when we're home cooking our, the food ourselves, we have this to say, that's your fruits and vegetables on the plate, as, as wide an opening of your palm as you can make with your fingers. If you look at that and put it down onto a plate, takes up about half of the plate. So those brightly colored fruits and vegetables are gonna be the bulk of what you're eating, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Your protein is gonna be about the size of your palm. It doesn't really matter how thick it is, just so you, so you can have a facing. And if you do this the next time you're served a steak uh, or a chicken breast or any sort of a protein at a, at a restaurant, an omelet, for example, put your palm down next to it and go one, two, three, sometimes you'll get three or four palms of protein out of what they're serving you. So what you need to do when you're out to eat, and we'll talk about this on the nutrition side, uh, on, the, on, on, on the nutrition seminar, when we're talking about practically how to make this kind of stuff work, you put your palm down there and you go, okay, that's about the size of it. You cut off that amount, put it to one side of your plate, put the other to the other side of your plate, and that's your leftovers. That's what you're bringing home, right? That's the, that's the doggy bag right there. You eat what's in this other part 
car that is properly proportioned. Your concentrated carbohydrates, these are things like oatmeal and bread and pasta. Um, you know, not the olive garden kind of, you know, endless pasta bowl that's as big as your head. It really should be this. And if you look at the size of that, compared to what your fruits and vegetables look like, compared to what your protein look like, that's a side dish. It's not the main focus of the, of the meal, right? And so that's gonna be, again, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then added fat. This is something that people a lot of times will look at that and they'll go, oh, well, I'll just, I'll just leave that to the side and I'll save myself all these calories. Metabolically, that's really important for people to add. It's gonna slow the absorption of the carbohydrates. It's gonna increase your satiety so that you're hungry, um, so you're full longer, so your hunger doesn't come back. If you do this, fruits and vegetables, uh, concentrated carbohydrates, protein, added fat, and you do that breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it's going to be around 1,500 calories for most people. If you have small hands, it'll be more like you know, 1,200. If you have big hands, it'll be more like 1,800. Uh, and that's all because you know each, one, each time you do that, it's about 500 calories. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, 1,500 calories. You can see where the math goes. Um, and people almost always in our programs, especially when we run them um, as, a, as, a, as a classroom setting, they'll come back after, after one week. So they would come back to next Thursday and they would go, uh-uh, I can't do this. There's no way I can eat this much food and still lose weight. I'm, I'm, I'm completely full all the time. I've never felt this way. I'm, I'm going to gain weight. And we'll, we'll tell them, no, nope, please promise us. Sometimes if they're really scared about it, we'll have them write down everything that they do using the helping hand. Uh, what's your breakfast? What's your lunch? What's your dinner? And then we'll enter it into a, into a calorie um, uh, software that we have. And we'll show them, look, that meal was 413 calories. That meal was 527 calories. And we'll show them that it actually is very... Uh, it's not calorically dense because you're eating so many fruits and vegetables, you're eating lean proteins, you're really getting a lot of bulk and not a lot of calories. And that's what's making you feel full. You're not typically, most people are typically used to not feeling that level of fullness unless they've had a thousand calories of processed food. Um, so uh, again, we'll get, in, we'll get into this kind of stuff. We're gonna have an exercise regimen to recommend to people. And it's not for weight control. I'm not gonna go through all these bullet points, but you know, if we were doing exercise for calorie expenditure, it'd be a full-time job. The reason we're doing exercise is because of its stress controlling benefits, because of its mental uh, wellness elevating benefits. We wanna use exercise to lower cortisol, to increase serotonin, to increase dopamine, to increase our own production of these, of these endocannabinoids that make us feel good and give us that, that euphoria feeling. And you can get that really, really simply. You don't have to train for a marathon. You can get it in, 20 minutes, 20 minutes a session. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you how we do that in just a second. The reason we're recommending this kind of stuff, if you look at the largest collection of what we call successful losers, the National Weight Control Registry, there's really three things that, that, that predict success of people being able to lose weight and keep it off. And that's what you see up here, that they they have 60 to 80 minutes a day of physical activity. That's lovely. If people have that much time, I will guarantee 90% of the people on this call right now do not have that much time. Um, and so we're going to try to compress that into a very concentrated way of thinking about exercise. But if you do have that amount of time, hallelujah, go out there and exercise for an hour a day. It's going to be, it's not for the caloric burn. It's for the establishment of habit. It's for the psychological benefits. It's for a little bit for the blood sugar control and cortisol control benefits, but it's not for the calories. The other thing that they have in common is 15 to 1800 calories a day. And you saw that as the sort of the, the driving sweet spot for a lot of those popular diets. And they also, the success that they had came a lot from having a buddy. Um, we know that if you get into this program, it's really going to help your success because that person is going to keep you engaged to what you started out on, right? You got excited about getting into this program in the beginning. You know, if your excitement wanes around week four or week five or something stressful happens in your life, you have that buddy to say, come on, let's get, let's get back into this. Let's get, let's get motivated again. Um, I talked a little bit already about resting metabolic rate. 
and why that's important. This program really helps maintain that resting metabolic rate. And then if you can actually add in, um, if you can add in uh, some, some uh, uh, what, uh, resistance training, weight training exercise, and actually add on some muscle, then that's going to increase your metabolic rate even more. As little as five pounds of added muscle is going to mean you burn 200 extra calories every single day. So we're going to talk about that kind of stuff as we go through. The main way that we're going to be doing the exercise, though, is going to be through aerobic exercise. Um, exercise where you move many large muscle groups rhythmic, rhythmically for a, for a prolonged period of time. But that prolonged period of time, unlike the National Weight Control Registry, 60 to 80 minutes, we're going to compress that down to about 20 minutes. And the reason we can do that, and you know, these kinds of exercise, um, is that we can do it with high intensity interval training, right? This is a very well described from a research perspective way of getting more bang from the small amount of buck that we're, that we're able to spend. The number one reason that people don't exercise on a regular basis is time or lack of time. And so if we can compress that down and still get as many benefits as possible, that's gonna be helpful for people. So the sort of baseline recommendation for people is to do it three times a week, 20 minutes a day and it's actually 18 minutes a day when you look at what's on the screen here if you do a warm-up five minute warm-up five minute cool down and then you alternate between one minute of high intensity which basically is hard enough where you're out of breath with one minute low intensity a low enough intensity where you can talk to somebody who you might be exercising with and then two and two and three and three and you ladder it that way that ends up being much more effective than steady state, what some people would call fat burning exercise. It's more effective for fat burning. It's more effective for total weight loss. It's more effective for overall caloric expenditure. It's more effective for hormone modulation and it's more effective for stress reduction. So it's more effective for absolutely everything that we do exercise for in the first place. And here's what a graph of that looks like. Um, just looking at the caloric piece of it. If you are in this light green steady state scenario, you, you know, you go, you start exercising, you go at this sort of fat burning zone that so many people exercise in and you go for you know, 18, 20 minutes, and you burn 189 calories. If you do it by that laddering way that I just described, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, um, I just got a message that it's not streaming to Facebook anymore, and I need to restart. Um, so let me let me let me finish this thought and then I'll and then I'll try to go back in there. You end up burning more than double the calories, right? So even if caloric expenditure were your target, you'd do a lot better with this method than with any other method. Um, so let me go in here and see what Facebook is doing to us now. I'm going to go live on Facebook again and see if I can sign in here real quick and bring the stream back up. Share in our group, Project B3, talk about what that looks like, um, what exercises to do, um, yeah, the importance of that for maintaining your muscle mass. We're going to talk about nutrition. We're going to have a whole night where we talk about meal planning and, and sort of, you know, lifestyle hacks to be able to get food on the table quicker and things you can do uh, uh, pre-prep to make things a lot easier to do. Um, and we really want people to, to at least have three, three intakes a day. One of those intakes might be the smoothies, right? Might be your GBX protein and, and super food and seed fiber and you know the kale and the beets and the berries and things like that that we're going to recommend in the smoothies but if you can gravitate towards having actual meals that you're putting together and then having snacks and we'll show you what those snacks look like too that's going to be really good for your overall ability to burn calories to have good energy to have fewer cravings all that kind of stuff and one of the reasons for it is that we're getting all of these different macronutrients they're all important for different reasons none of these is more important than the other one. You know, sometimes people will gravitate and say, I want to do a high protein plan because that's most important. And it isn't necessarily. If we can bring people back to this helping hand scenario and get them to understand that you want all of those kinds of things um, so that your body metabolizes 
metabolizes appropriately. One of the things that we want people to understand in this program is that carbohydrates are not bad. We want you to have the right kinds of carbohydrates because th this in green, fat burns in the flame of carbohydrate. You have to have some small amount of carb in your diet in order to maximize your fat metabolism. That carb is going to feed the brain, which is going to make you happier and improve your mental wellness, but it's also going to improve your metabolism. If we can get the right kinds of carbs balanced with the right protein, with the right fats, with the right fibers, you're going to, you're going to do a lot better from a metabolic standpoint. Fiber is probably the most important, even more important than the protein, because this is the thing that's going to feed the microbiome. So all of our GBX foods and our fundamentals are specifically, precisely targeting microbiome nourishment. And that's really, really important for some of the things that I started the call with. Um, but fiber in general is going to be really good. The recommended intake for Americans, men and women, is between 25 and 35 grams a day. But even that is just a fraction of what we know is sort of a healthy level. If you look at hunter-gatherer cultures around the world, they're taking in more of like 100 to 100. 150 grams of fiber and their microbiome looks a lot different than ours does in a, in a, in a Western society. So if you can get at least this amount, you're going to be more full. You're going to have better blood sugar control, which is going to be good mentally and physiologically. You're going to have better microbiome balance and things are just going to sort of, you know, go, go in the right direction. So I just got a couple of more slides here about the supplements. So we want people to be on the fundamentals pack as a, as a minimum. This is the pack where we've had so many people who in the early days of taking it, meaning the first few weeks, the first few months, mental wellness improvements are, are, are dramatic and noticeable. Depression is down, anxiety is down, stress levels are down, resilience is up, sleep patterns are improved, like all the mental wellness parameters are changing in a positive direction. And like I said earlier, they're getting this nice side benefit of, hey, I also lost a few pounds, and what's up with that? It's because of all the things that I've been talking about so far on this call. Um, so that's, it. That's, what, that's why we want people to get there. You're getting the right signals through your body in terms of neurotransmitters and appetite signals and inflammatory cascade and all, all that kind of stuff is important. We also want people to use the GBX foods because it just makes things convenient, right? It's, it, it, if you have the time to do the shopping and you know, cut up the vegetables and make them into your own versions of smoothies and you know how to cook all that kind of stuff, fantastic. Don't change that, right? Keep doing that. That. I'm a I'm a hobby chef of my own so I love to do that kind of stuff when I have the time but when I don't this is what I gravitate towards when I have to run out to catch a plane or when I have to run between one webinar and catch a workout really quick before the next webinar this is the kind of stuff that I do because it really fills the gap it makes it convenient it actually makes it very affordable when you when you do the comparison between what you bought at the produce section and what you bought in the in the canisters and the and the convenience factor of it when we do the reboot, and I'll have some more information about reboot um, in the week coming up to when we're actually going to start it next Thursday so that people can do the reboot Thursday, Friday, Saturday of next week. So that is the 8th, the 9th, and the 10th. That's what our target reboot as a group is going to be. And I get it. A lot of the Amari leaders are going to be in Cancun, and I'm going to be there with you. And so we'll talk about the reboot while we're sitting on the beach eating all the nice, wonderful food food and we might do our reboot afterwards uh, but 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 we want to do the reboot because these reboot uh, these GBX foods are reboot friendly it really makes this piece of the enjoy a lot more enjoyable it gives you different ways to consume those fruits and vegetables it gives you something to do with the kale that we're recommending it gives a really convenient simple fast way for us to get that that that, that phytonutrient profile into our bodies and we'll talk about why this is important why we recommend these foods why we tell you to avoid these foods yeah and and you know that, that that's what you know our project b3 uh you know 
program looks like. And, and you know, now that everybody has an, a, a quick understanding as to the physical components, the mental wellness components, the brain components, and the biome components, I just want to, you know, remind you guys that all those clinical studies and all the products, the 22 products that we have roll up into the, the grand mothership of, of mental wellness. And, you know, I can see in the chat here that, you know, we've, people are, are commenting that, hey, you know, Project B3 was easy and, and the results were, were beneficial. And, you know, don't just take it from, you know, Dr. Sean and myself. You know, the, there, there are people out there and there are, are people who participated in the study that actually saw all the things that, you know, we, we've been talking about tonight. So with, with that being said, you know, I, I want to make sure that I'm respectful of your guys' time. And, you know, it's 7.06 uh, Pacific time here. And, and I want to thank you guys for, for joining us tonight on the topic of physical health, um, you know, mental health and, and, you know, our microbiomes health. So this upcoming Thursday, you know, is going to be our end of the month virtual science night. And I want you guys to, to be able to, to, to come with any questions that you guys have and so that we can have a questions and, and answers kind of uh, session where we can have a dialogue together because the last eight sessions, you know, from, from July 1st till now, were really us talking about, you know, how nutrients are important to our mental health, how nutrients are important to our brain, how nutrients are important to our body. Um, but, you know, our last call, I want to make sure we uh, are, are able to recap and we get the, we, we share the opportunity to, to have a dialogue to answer questions that you guys might be uh, thinking about that we might not have covered. So with that being said, on Thursday, two days from now, make sure you, you invite your team your, your, and, and bring all the questions that you guys might have because we're going to have a questions and answers session and you know I'm excited to be able to sit down and, 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 and answer anything that you guys might be wondering about. Okay, so with that being said, have a good night everybody and we'll talk soon.